Week three of quarantine, eh? Let's do this. So after being backstabbed by Dr. Samuel Hayden, the Doom Slayer is back. This time, after failing to prevent the invasion of Hell on Earth, he has to go in and avenge the Earth and actually destroy all of the hellish hordes and demons that inhabit it now and are wreaking havoc across the globe. Officially, Doom Eternal is the fifth game in the series, and technically it's the second one out of the rebooted series. And full disclosure, I've never played any of them, but the first one I did play, Doom, in 2016, was my first experience with it, and oh my god, this game was amazing. It was chaotic, it was action-oriented, and it had a pretty cool story. And honestly, it's a reboot done right because it pulled in a new fan such as myself and actually interwove some mythology from the previous games especially some of the stuff that they dealt with in the original. So when it came to this one, I had very, very high expectations. And guys, this one blew me away. I mean, the 2016 game had all the action, had all the story that you would want into it, which it was basic to the point, but it had kind of a hidden mythology about it. And then on top of that, the music was amazing. Now, admittedly, it's a slow start. It doesn't get you right into the shit as fast as I wanted it to, much like the original story. But... This game delivers on all fronts, gives you a fresh coat of paint. There's new methods and strategies. The arsenal is changed and the mechanics are changed slightly, but they are still relative to the previous game, and that way you don't have to take a whole lot of time to get right back into everything. So like I mentioned, the graphics, they get a new coat of paint, and it is amazing. These things look incredible. There are even more demons and more detail inside of them, and there's more strategies that you have to work around because the AI has been tweaked ever so slightly. And like I said, you get more weapons this time. You've got even more add-ons, and then you've got kind of like this up-close-and-personal blade, and the freaking flame belcher and grenade launcher and ice grenade launcher and those end up in heightening and enhancing the gameplay even that much more and then the real big proponent for me though was the fact that the doom mythology has been added to like i said guys i never played the first original doom games or doom 3 so 2016 introduced me to the character of the doom slayer and kind of the world in a very big way and from what i understand it actually added even more to it but this adds even more on top of that. And not only that, but it even connects to the first original games. That's right, guys. The Doom Slayer is actually revealed to be the original Doom guy. And there are several different story elements and story cutscenes and everything that kind of go through on this to show you how he ended up coming into this new era of Doom. And it is amazing. And as you're going through all these demons, all these big bosses, the final boss is a callback to the original Doom games, the Icon of Sin. And he is just as daunting, just as crazy as you might expect, at least in my opinion. But one of the cheapest demons that you ever fight is actually a doppelganger or a reverse of you. So there's these things in the game called Marauders, which are basically old dead Doom Slayers that are resurrected and turned into demon form that just make your life a living hell. They are such a big pain in the ass. They have a shotgun like you do, and they have a melee axe. Not only do they have that, but they have this freaking little spirit entity, freaking tiger, lion, whatever it is, this big cat that's trying to kill you and maul you, and it's one of the cheapest things ever. And I died so many freaking times trying to get these guys, but once you've got the pattern down and you know what you can and can't do, it's, it's pretty cool, and it's pretty challenging, and it's pretty fun to basically figure out, as it is for a lot of the other different demons and bosses inside of this game. And then on top of that, there's these little tidbits and collectibles that come back into this game. Just like the last game, there's toys, there's different upgrades, runes, all that stuff. But then on top of that, get this, guys, they've got cheats for the game that you find as part of the secrets. And even further than this, I give so much credit to these guys because... These cheats, once you find them, you can incorporate them and use them when you go back and play missions, and it doesn't affect your progression. So kudos to the developers for this game. You made another kick-ass game. It was a sequel that was even more badass and awesome, and continuing the through line, adding to the mythology. And guys, it is phenomenal. If you have not gotten this game, what the hell are you waiting for? Go grab it now, and especially since we're all quarantined anyway, you have to kill some time, 
this is what you should be spending your money on, definitely. But all in all, guys, that's my review for Doom Eternal. Go grab the game immediately, whether you are a hardcore gamer or a casual like myself. But anyway, guys, that's all the time that I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me as always. And until next time, guys, I'm Jay. So take care. Bye.